Amazing Lost City in Egypt Shocks Archaeologists Ancient Egypt is still a world we haven't fully explored or discovered yet, and we keep finding new amazing things about this ancient civilization. Recently, archaeologists discovered an entire lost city near Luxor, and what they saw there shocked everyone. Luxor is, to this day, one of the largest cities in Egypt. The city is located much further south than most ancient Egyptian sites, but is still located along the Nile. It has a history dating back to 3200 BC and is still inhabited, making it the oldest continually inhabited city in Africa. It was a regional center of religion and spiritualism. But what we didn't know is that there were also other huge cities nearby. In a discovery that was announced earlier this year, archaeologists said they have discovered a 3,000-year-old city near Luxor that is named Aten, and some are calling it the most significant ancient Egyptian discovery since the tomb of Tutankhamun. The expedition was led by famed Egyptian archaeologist Zahi Hawass, one of the most notorious archaeologists of modern times, and it began in September of 2020 with a big announcement being made in April of 2021. The city of Aten is the single largest lost city that has ever been discovered in Egypt. It's believed that this city was established by King Amenhotep III, the ninth king of Egypt's 18th dynasty, who ruled from 1386 BC to 1349 BC. King Amenhotep III is widely regarded as one of Egypt's greatest rulers, who brought the kingdom more stability and promoted Egyptian art during his reign. During that time, Aten might have been the largest industrial and administrative city of that era. This discovery is especially important because this city was built at a time when Egypt was at the peak of its grandeur. It was the richest the empire had ever been. Art was flourishing, and there was no outside competition that Egypt faced at the time. As we look further into the city, we'll have an entirely new level of understanding of what life was like for ancient Egyptians especially during times of peace. When digging first began in September of 2020, the primary goal was to find the mortuary temple of King Tutankhamun. And after further exploration, the team sent out a statement saying, within weeks, to the team's great surprise, formation of mud bricks began to appear in all directions. What they unearthed was the site of a large city in a good condition of preservation with almost complete walls and with rooms filled with tools of daily life. They were shocked at how well preserved everything was, almost as if they had buried the city in the sand just yesterday. The walls in the city were over 10 feet high, and they managed to find proper homes that seemed even more luxurious than the homes you see in present-day Egypt. There were also hieroglyphic inscriptions that were found on all sorts of objects, like pottery, rings, wine vessels, scarabs, and mud bricks. This was how the estimated date of this city was discovered, as they all carried the cartouche seal of King Amenhotep III. While they weren't initially looking for the city, there was always an indication, due to the extensive historical knowledge we have of King Amenhotep III's rule, that there was some sort of lost city from his era, but it was thought to have been long lost to history, presumably destroyed or damaged beyond repair. Many foreign missions searched for this city and never found it, Zahi Hawass, the lead archaeologist, said. Since the initial discovery of the city, many more specific discoveries about it have also been made. Among the most interesting were the large kitchen and bakery that were found near the city center. The kitchen was quite similar to bakery kitchens we see even today, and had everything from large ovens, pots used for food storage, and even counters. Among the many houses, they also found what seemed like the administrative district of the city. This is probably where the ruler or minister of the city lives, and there were high security measures taken for this district. There was only one entrance to this sector of the city, and it was surrounded by a tall zigzag wall, which was considered more secure at the time. There was also a workshop where workers built valuable items like gold coins and rings, indicating that this was an important industrial center for ancient Egypt as well. They also found tools that indicated that spinning and weaving were common activities in the city at the time. There wasn't a lot of indication that any of the residents were poor. It seems that this was mainly a city that was inhabited by Egypt's elite, 
which makes sense considering its proximity to some of ancient Egypt's most important historical sites as well. Some of the artifacts that were presented to the public include a lot of jewelry, colored pots, mud bricks and seals. There's still a lot more to discover with this ancient city. According to Zahi Hawass, only a small part of the city has been unearthed so far, with his team expecting to find all sorts of new artifacts including ancient temples, mansions, untouched tombs, as well as hidden treasure. If the city of Aten lives up to its surroundings, it could potentially usher a brand new era of amazing Egyptian discoveries, the likes of which we haven't seen since the late 19th century and early 20th century. This is an area that's known for its amazing discoveries. For example, the tomb of Tutankhamun was found nearby in the Valley of the Kings, and it was considered one of the most monumental discoveries in the history of Egypt. Luxor, the closest city to Aten, is also one of Egypt's most amazing historical sites. The ancient part of the city is known as Thebes, but was actually known to ancient Egyptians as Waset. Some of these sites include the Luxor Temple and the Karnak Temple Complex. The Karnak Temple Complex was built during the reign of Senusret I, who was the second pharaoh of the 12th Egyptian dynasty, who reigned from 1971 BC to 1926 BC. This was one of the main places of worship in ancient Egypt. It was made specifically for the worship of Amun, an ancient Egyptian god. At the center of the temple is the Great Hypostyle Hall, which used to have a roof in ancient times but has since collapsed. What's left of it is its incredibly detailed pillars that tell the story of ancient Egyptian mythology. It also tells us the story of ancient Egypt overall, as many pharaohs who came added their own little details into the inscriptions. There are also rows of ram-headed sphinxes lined up along the temple, as the ram was one of the animals that Thebes, an ancient Egyptian deity, was identified with. It was one of the first major temples to also be rediscovered by Europeans, as tales of this temple might have reached even ancient Greece and Rome. Today, the Karnak Temple is a tourist attraction that's considered the world's largest open-air museum. The other large temple here is the Luxor Temple. The Luxor Temple is located along both sides of the Nile River in the main city of Luxor, and it was also one of the most prominent religious sites in the ancient Egyptian religion. The Luxor Temple is actually a whole temple complex, with several temples located along both sides of the river. The Luxor Temple actually wasn't used to worship a specific god, but rather it was used as a way to worship pharaohs, who were considered some sort of god themselves. Even Alexander the Great claimed he was coronated at the Luxor Temple, as many Egyptian pharaohs were. However, most historians agree that Alexander the Great never actually went that far south. Nonetheless, the temple also has many incredible features, including a pathway that connected the temple to the Karnak Temple that's decorated with numerous sphinxes. The Luxor Temple even managed to outlast the ancient Egyptian religion, as it was converted to a church in 395 AD after the Roman conquest of Egypt and then it was turned into the location of a mosque in 640 AD. And to this day, that mosque continues to operate, making the Luxor Temple one of the longest continuously active places of worship in the world. With amazing sites like these, along with new discoveries such as the lost city of Aten, the Egyptian government hopes to transform this region of Egypt into a renewed tourist attraction, as tourism had taken a huge hit in the country due to political instability. This means that more funding is being released to archaeological sites than ever before, and more permits are being given as well. The following years are certainly going to be interesting to observe if you're into ancient Egypt. That's a wrap for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this.